QuickBooks Online 2022, PayPal and bank feeds. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page in the business view as compared to the accountant view. Switching to the accountant view is something you can do by going to the cog up top switch to the accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently and the accountant view. Back on over to the bank feed practice file, opening up a couple tabs to put reports in by right clicking the tab up top, duplicating it, back to the tab to the left, right click it again and duplicating it. And as that is thinking, we're gonna jump on over to the sample company file just to locate where the reports are at, which is on the left hand side under reports back on over to the business view we're in the second tab reports here are going to be under the business overview and we're just going to open up a couple of reports in the reports section closing up the hamburger it's thinking here hold on a second people my computer's thinking there it is it's going into the balance sheet that's the one that's the one we want. Going up top, we're gonna to do the range change from 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21, and run. And tap to the right. And then we're gonna to go to the business overview again and reports, closing up the booger Hamburg and going to the profit and loss, the P and L, the income statement, changing that range in 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21, and run. Let's go to the first tab now. We've been working on our bank feed information on the left and we could find that is located if in the business view under the bookkeeping on the left hand side, transactions up top, banking. If you were in the accountant view, it would then be in the banking information up top and the banking up top, double banking if you're in that view. Going back on over, You'll re recall that in prior presentations, we've been putting together the bank feeds for the checking account. We then did bank feeds for the credit card account. And now we're thinking about what about like those PayPal account, which is oftentimes thought of as kind of an intermediary type of platform. One which if you do an online type of work, you might be using in order to get your payments from say like other platforms that you are working with. So there's a couple ways you might deal with that. You might say, okay, wait, what if I just wait until that information, I'm gonna go down here to the checking account, clears to to my actual my actual checking account. And so that's one method that you can use and say, look, I'm just gonna wait till the PayPal goes into the checking account. I'm just gonna use it as an intermediary type of system to collect from whatever platform I'm collecting on or whoever's paying me that I gotta get paid through through there. And then when it hits the checking account, in other words, when I transfer it from PayPal to the checking account, then I'll just record it as income at that point in time. That's one method you could do, which is fairly easy method that you can use. But what if you're getting paid by multiple different people through PayPal and you wanna break that information out into multiple income statement accounts. If I go to the right, for example, I wanna add multiple income statement accounts and who's paying me type of information into QuickBooks. And uh, also, what if I'm using PayPal more as a bank account now and I'm making payments out of PayPal. Now it's working not as just a collection type of platform, but also it's working kind of like a bank or checking account because I'm making transactions both in and out of it. So therefore I have more of a need to connect the bank feed. So let's go ahead and see that process. I don't think you could do this yet on the desktop version, uh, connect PayPal that is. And so that's really nice that you can be able to do it online. Hopefully they get the desktop version up and running with that as well. So we can go ahead and you go to the, to the link account here and you would go into another link account and you would say, okay, PayPal, it's right there. I could see it already and possibly be linking up the PayPal. You got the different basically PayPal options. So you'd wanna be looking at the, the correct PayPal. Once again, you'd have to verify your account, of course, and go through the verification process to connect PayPal. But the fact that they have that kind of lined up option is nice. You have the same kind of thing where you might be able to upload the transactions to the system. However, PayPal on their end have do not have at this point in time the capacity to download like a QBO type of file as we saw with the checking 
and credit card account, but you can download a CSV file, which is kind of like an unformatted Excel worksheet. So that's what we'll practice here. So if we, if we were to say, I want to go to the link and I want to say upload from a file, for example, then we might have a file that looks something like this, jumping over to the desktop. And this file is, it looks like an Excel file, but it's a .csv file. So if I was to go to the properties here, then it would be a CSV type of file, I believe, which is right here, the, the Microsoft Excel comma separated values, otherwise known as the .csv. So we'll try to upload that one into our system. And so I'm gonna be on the left-hand side, gonna manually upload. This is just like what we saw before, except that we're using a slightly different file type. You can see here that the .csv or .qfx, .qbo, .ofx, .txt are the files that possibly could work in this process. If you're not connecting to the bank, once uploaded, we'll have the information in place. It'll be in what I call bank feed limbo, included in the system, but not yet used to create the financial statements and we'll be in the same spot whether we connected directly to the bank or if we uploaded if everything runs the way it should let's see if everything will run the way it should i'm going to go over here and go to the desktop how should it run i know how things should run if it doesn't run the way i say it's not running the way it should that's how you know so i'm going to say continue and it's going to try to put it in a QuickBooks account. So I don't have one set up. So I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to add another one, another QuickBooks account. It's going to be a bank type of account because I need the bank feeds for it. I'll call it just a checking account here. That second item doesn't matter too much. You got to make sure the first one's on the banking account. PayPal, pay up pal, PayPal. There it is. Let's go ahead and save it and close it. That's the one we want you to put it in to QuickBooks. There we go. And then let's set up your file in QuickBooks. Tell us about the format of your data. Is the first row in your file a header? So I'm gonna say, now before we upload it, it's a little bit more tedious when we're looking at the CSV file from PayPal because it adds a lot of detail in the information that we don't really need for the bank feeds. So you can open it up if you were gonna do this format. You don't need to do this, obviously, if you were to connect directly to the bank and possibly clean it up a bit. And all we really need for the bank feeds is the date, the increase and the decrease, and then a name is the minimal information we typically want to have so that we can record the transactions going up and down, have the name, record the customer and the vendor, and then be able to assign it to the correct account. So I'm just gonna delete everything that is not that. So in other words, I'm gonna delete the time. I'm gonna delete the time zone. Just delete those items. I'm gonna have the name here, the transaction type I don't need, the status, the currency, the gross I don't need. What I want, what I really want is the net. And this kind of comes into a problem with the fees. You got an issue with the fees, but I'm gonna put it in here, net of the fees. So I'm gonna just pick up the net and I'm gonna right click and delete that information. And then I'm gonna be deleting all of this other stuff. That's basically all I want to be uploading into the system. I'm gonna delete all this other, other stuff and delete. So now we've got just the date, the name, and the net amount, which is basically what we, what we want to be using to pull it in. I'm gonna close this out, I'm gonna save it. And so now we've got the information necessary. I'm gonna save it to the desktop. I'll put it on the desktop and say, this is gonna be PayPal. And I'm gonna say this is the ADJ one. I wanna save it as a .csv file, so comma delimited. So let's save it there. So that should be good. Let's go back in, selecting that file. So now I'm gonna go back in and say it's the, the PayPal adjusted item here. So now it's added. I'm gonna continue, go to the next step. It says, uh, which account are these transactions from? I'm gonna put this into a new account if you don't have one, which is gonna be a PayPal account that you wanna make sure that you set up as a bank type of account, which you could set up as you go if you don't have one set up already by going to the add new up top. And then you could say it's a bank account and name it as a PayPal type of account. So I'm gonna choose that item, continue. And then it says, it's gonna tell us about this information that we're uploading. Is the first row your header? I'm gonna say yes, the first row is the header. How many columns show amounts? 
so only one column uh, has amounts in it. In other words, I'm not showing increases in one column, decreases in another, but showing the decreases with a negative number. What's the date format used in the file type? The date format is month, month, day, day, year, year, I believe that's gonna be the proper one there. And so the date is coming from, now it's mapping out to, to the actual columns that are on the, on the worksheet. So the date column is that one that looks correct. The description, I'm gonna net out to the name column that I have in my worksheet. So I could have changed it to description to make it populate easier, but I'm just gonna map it out. That's what I wanna go in the description column. And the amount is gonna be the amount that says net that I put in the description item. And so there we have it, let's continue. And so it's picking up the information. Now it's having a problem with these items that didn't have anything in the name, these being transfers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust that. I'm gonna put into my Excel worksheet that these are gonna be transfers in the description. So it'll be able to put something in that column and pick it up. Okay, so I'm gonna close it out and try it again. I'm gonna close it out. Let's do it again. And I'm gonna go up top and say I want to upload. I wanna upload from the file. It's gonna upload the file, which I have now have populated something in every uh, cell, PayPal continue and then the account is paypal and continue and then yes one column what's the date format the date format is going to be that one and then date column description is in my case the name column the amount is net let's see if it does it this time continue on uh, which transactions do you want to add i'm going to basically i'm going to add all the transactions selecting all of them all of them look like they are addable. And then I'm gonna scroll down. That looks good, so I'm gonna continue. Let's add them all. QuickBooks will import 44 using fields you choose. I'm gonna say, all right, let's do it. Add the 44, import complete, done. And so now we've got three tabs up top, the PayPal, the checking, and the credit card. And we've uploaded the PayPal. Now we've got this information, just like we saw with the checking account we'd have it in the bank feed limbo information down below, and we can add it just like we would with any other kind of checking account. It's not yet being used to populate into the financial statements at this point in time, and we'll go through and add them, and we'll focus primarily on just adding you know, different kind of accounts and seeing how it might differ from adding it from PayPal versus waiting until it hits the checking account, and we'll take a look at those inter, those inter bank fee transactions between PayPal and the checking account, for example, when you're transferring from PayPal to the checking account, now you've got a transaction that's gonna go into two accounts, both of which are being uh, driven by the bank feeds. So we'll see that in future presentations.